St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from several donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Walkerton, Ontario. In memory of her husband, her daughter, and for the living and deceased members of their families and for her personal intentions. The second is an anonymous donor uh, from Gatineau, Quebec, in thanksgiving for blessings received, for the, for the helpless unborn, and for the holy souls. The third are anonymous donors from across Canada for their personal intentions. To each and to all, we thank you for this gift of the Mass. So now to prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause once again to place ourselves in God's presence, again conscious of our need of God's grace and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us your spirit and call us to holiness, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the last day, you will present us to the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you keep together those you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are consecrated to you by our common baptism, Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The first covenant had an earthly sanctuary, for a tent was constructed in which were the lampstand, the table, and the bread of the presence. This is called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a tent called the Holy of Holies. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkle of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without blemish to God. Purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. God ascends with songs of joy. The sound of trumpets greets the Lord. God ascends with songs of joy. The sound of trumpets greets the Lord. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great King over all the earth. God ascends with songs of joy. God 
has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. God ascends with songs of joy, the sound of trumpets greets the Lord. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. God ascends with songs of joy. The sound of trumpets greets the Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to listen eagerly to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. The Gospel of the Lord. In much of the church throughout this past week, we have been celebrating what's called the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. While our readings today don't necessarily reflect the theme of unity, I want to just spend these few moments recalling our common responsibility as Christians. Let me begin by saying, for those of you who can remember and go back that far, I can recall as a young boy never being allowed even to enter into a Protestant church or an Anglican church. It was simply not permitted. My whole teenage years even, up until I left my hometown, I, I did not even know what the inside of a Protestant church looked like. And there was a certain attitude among us, I think, that that sort of acknowledge the fact that we're not sure what's going to happen to these Protestants, you know, uh, that maybe their salvation is a bit questionable. And um, so it would be better perhaps even if your son or daughter tried not to marry a Protestant or an Anglican. Um, I I'm sure that those are familiar themes that you can remember and recall as you page back through your own memories. But it was in 1963 when the church at the Second Vatican Council came to a new and a deeper awareness of the need to work diligently for the unity of the church. It realized that actually a church divided is a scandal to the world. And a church divided is a weaker church. I mean, we know that from our own experiences, when we experience feelings of division from within ourselves, we, we, we feel the weakness of it. 
as opposed to being unified and strengthened uh, as one. And so the church took on the task, the, the, the universal task, of trying to teach and tell its membership that we have a new responsibility. That is to teach and to pray anew for the unity of the church, to come to some understanding anew of those gripping words of Jesus as he lay dying in his latter hours when he said in John's gospel, praying to the Father, that they all may be one. Father, as you are in me and I am in you, that they also may be one in us. It was a prayer filled with passion. You know what it's like when a, when a parent is dying and very often they make a last request, you know? Make sure the youngest among you is looked after or make sure you stay together as a family and don't allow things to come in between you and, and separate you, but stay united. Well, in many ways, that was the experience of Jesus as he lay dying in John's gospel, and, and as this passion, this prayer, drifts through his lips, that they all may be one, Father, as you are in me and I am in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. It is as though the church heard those words with new intention, with new authority, with a new conviction, and launched its best efforts to begin to, to, to dialogue with Protestants and Anglicans and Orthodox, and to take on this recognition that it must play a role of leadership in trying to fulfill the gospel mandate. And so it is that we recognize, and it's spoken of in the texts of the documents of the church, that prayer, prayer, the Vatican document says, is the soul of the ecumenical movement. And that means that you and I have to take on a certain responsibility, that you and I must become spiritual ecumenists, and we must devote some part of our prayer to the efforts that are being in place to bring the church united. And you know that the efforts of the last almost 50 years have indeed had a dramatic change on the way in which we now behave as Catholics. Uh, the, the way in which our attitudes have changed towards our Protestant brothers and sisters and, and Orthodox and Anglicans. We now have a, a new sort of fellowship. We, we now come together with regularity, as is the case this week of the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. We come together and we pray. The great disappointment in our hearts remains that we cannot break the bread and share the cup at the altar. And until that day, uh, our hearts remain relentlessly committed to the need to work and pray for the unity of the, of the Christian church so that we can be truly a visible sign universally as the people of God united with one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father of us all. That this would be our grace and blessing as we go forward and continue throughout this week of prayer for Christian unity, not only today, but in the days ahead, that we would remember our responsibility as spiritual ecumenists to pray that the prayer of Jesus would truly be fulfilled. Let us pray now for the intentions let us in our prayer of petition today, let us remember those who are called to spiritual and civil leadership. We remember especially Benedict, our Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, all, uh, all lay leaders, that together we might be a beacon of hope, especially for the poor, the disadvantaged, the marginalized in our world today, we pray to the Lord. Today, let us call to mind and commend to our prayers Christians who undergo suffering and execution in defense of their faith, that they may experience the consolation of the gospel in the midst of their trial and tribulation. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us also raise up in prayer today the sick and the suffering, the hospitalized, the homebound, the terminally ill, those preparing for death, and for all who have died in the friendship of the Lord, 
And once again, I ask your prayers for the health and well-being of my brother Lawrence as he continues his cancer treatments. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord In a special way, we pray for the personal intentions of our viewing audience, that their friendship with the Lord Jesus will provide for them the fulfillment of their prayer intentions in each of their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, in this week of prayer for Christian unity, I invite you to join your prayer with, the, with that of Jesus to the Father, that all may be one. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord our God, you know our hearts and you probe our thoughts. Hear now and answer the prayers we present to you, those spoken aloud and those that remain in the secret of our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Brother Mr. this one and one, I come to share the vineyard Christ almost like to share in my hand. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you. Lord God, I wash in my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father, by one perfect sacrifice, you gained as us as your people Bless us and all your church with the gifts of unity and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, O oh powerful and ever living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, you bring us to the knowledge of your truth, that we may be united by one faith and one baptism to become his body. Through Christ, you have given us the Holy Spirit to all peoples. How wonderful are the works of the Spirit revealed in so many gifts, yet how marvelous is the unity the Spirit creates from their diversity as he dwells in the hearts of your children, filling the whole church with his presence and guiding it with his wisdom. In our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels in heaven. come to you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son.
Through him, we ask you to accept and to bless these gifts which we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Grant it peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you this sacrifice of praise for ourselves and those who are dear to us. We pray to you, our living and true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we honor Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, and all the saints. May their merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life. Save us from final damnation and count us among those you have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you an offering in spirit and truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands and looking up to heaven to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death, Lord Jesus, until calling, for, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son. We, your people, and your ministers recall his passion, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given to us, we offer to you, God of glory and majesty, this holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life, the cup of eternal salvation. Look with favor on these offerings and accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered to, by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your holy angel may take this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, too, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. 
Do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord, you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so with faith and in confidence we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may this peace of the Lord always be with you. Yes. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. My friends, this is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. The body of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 